seven days, six flights, one cruise, and the most stressful vacation I could have ever imagined. Let's jump in. Hey guys, this is Allie with Cruise Blog. I am currently prepping and packing for probably one of the craziest trips I've ever thought of doing or thought that was a good idea of doing. I am flying standby tomorrow to Europe to try and catch a two night really cheap Norwegian cruise. The cruise was really cheap. It was $99 per person. It's two nights leaving from Malaga and ending in Lisbon. Tomorrow, Haley from Cruise Blog and I have our backpacks packed we are attempting to get to Europe tomorrow. The cruise leaves on Friday and tomorrow is Tuesday. So that should be enough time to get to where we need to go so that we do not miss the cruise. Hopefully we'll see you guys in Europe. Having standby benefits is great because it means that we could fly to Europe for almost free. But I had two major concerns with flying standby to our cruise. First, we could not fly directly to Malaga where our cruise would begin. This meant we would have to fly somewhere else in Europe and then buy a separate flight to Malaga. Haley and I settled on flying into London as there were a lot of standby options available. We could fly to many cities in Spain from London for easy access to Malaga. My second concern was making hotel and flight reservations within Europe. Since we didn't even know for sure if we would be getting to Europe, we didn't really want to waste money on flights and hotels. But I was nervous that last minute prices would be really high, thus negating the savings that we incurred by flying standby anyway. However, we were already too far committed to our plan to back out at this point, so we decided to continue with our plans despite the uncertainty. The next day, Haley and I headed to the airport to try and catch our first standby flight, and luckily we were able to snag a spot and the trip started out pretty stress-free. Once we got to our connecting city, we were assigned seats to London, much to our relief. I started to book hotels in London and Malaga while Haley coordinated our flights to the cruise port. Shockingly, our budget-friendly flights were no longer $50 to Malaga, but instead they had jumped into the $200 to $400 range and that's even on a cheap budget airline. We unfortunately are running out of options to get to where we need to go. We're panicking. So our top choice was actually a $200 flight to Granada, which we attempted to book while our flight started boarding to London. But once we tried to book, there were actually no flights available. We instantly panicked as the other flights that were available were showing around $400 each on Ryanair to Malaga for our cruise. We were really shocked by these prices and we were panicking. But at this point, it was really our only option if we wanted to make the cruise. It's really expensive and at this point, I don't think the idea was very cost effective. <laughs> we were committed to the trip and the cruise at this point, so we booked the flights to Malaga literally as we walked on board our flight to London. And seeing how the prices had skyrocketed for that flight, we wanted to lock in a direct flight after the cruise from Lisbon to London on Wizz Air. At just $90 each, we wanted to get these seats confirmed, which we did quite literally as the plane's wheels lifted and we were off to Europe. We made it! Hello from London! <laughs> Once we landed in London, we felt a sense of peace that the standby hurdle itself was over and we could enjoy our day in this wonderful city. With coffee in hand, we walked around the gloomy and quiet city in the morning hours. We were thrilled that we had an entire day before our next travel plans of flying to Malaga the following day. We did a really great job of leaving the standby stress behind as we took full advantage of our time in this wonderful city. We're heading to the airport. We had a nice, 13 hours sleep. Haley's ready to go. Ready to go. Heading to the train, to the train, to the airport, to the cruise port. Whoa. Yay! Here we go. With our flight scheduled at 5 p.m., we wanted to allocate plenty of time to get to the airport so that we didn't miss our flight. It's a good thing we gave ourselves plenty of time because here's us unknowingly going to the wrong airport in London. Luckily, we found out just in time and got ready to board the train to London Stansted Airport instead. We're here by the grace of God. We went all the way to Victoria Station to take the Gatwick Express and Haley said, why don't we just check the ticket just to make sure. She pulled out the ticket and it said we're leaving from Stanston Airport. It's looking pretty good. We should get there about three o'clock and our flight's at five. 
Now I'm like, une I don't know. It's like, you, like I don't trust myself now. <laughs> and I felt like we were doing so good and like that was the only thing we had to do today was to get to the airport for our flight and yep. it seems like it's so complicated, so. We're doing good. And cruise tomorrow. Cruise tomorrow, yay. <laughs> now I'm like, are we sure? <laughs> Once we boarded the train, we breathed a sigh of relief to be on our way to the right airport until the train broke down. I cannot make this up. Thankfully, the train started moving within a few minutes and we were on our way to the airport again, but it was really a big scare that we didn't need at this point. Getting off the train at the airport brought us one final hurdle. Much to our frustration, we found that there was one single worker manually checking every single person's train ticket before they could board the escalator up to the terminal. So we made the decision to leave this bottleneck crowd and head to the elevator instead. This ended up being a really good call as we were able to get on the elevator quickly and up to the check-in counter within a few minutes of waiting. Once through security, we walked another 15 minutes to our gate and our flight started to board within a few minutes of our arrival. Luckily, it all worked out and we arrived safely in Malaga around 10 p.m. and we made our way to the hotel. Good morning, Haley. Good morning. Here we are, heading to the port. There's Haley, ready to go. After all the stress of getting to Spain, we were thrilled that it was finally cruise day. We hoped all of the stress and panicking would be worth it once we got on board. <laughs> the Norwegian Sun was launched in 2000 and it's Norwegian's second oldest ship. We quickly got on board and checked out our cabin, which was really quite spacious, although the bathroom was pretty dated with this lime green color that was pretty atrocious. Once we were on board, Haley and I decided to explore Norwegian Sun. We also wanted to grab some lunch in the buffet because we had slept so late we missed breakfast at our hotel. I was pretty impressed by the food that was available in the buffet, although Haley felt like the buffet on this Norwegian ship was really small and not very well laid out compared to the other Norwegian ships she had been on. We also decided to walk around the ship at this point and eventually we made our way to the bar to grab a mojito where we relaxed on the top deck for a little bit and took in the sights of Malaga off in the distance. It was nice to kick back and relax after all of the stress and panicking we had done to get to this point. We really just wanted to enjoy the quick getaway for what it was because this was the main goal of our trip and we were so excited to be on board Norwegian Sun because we would have felt horrible if we had missed our cruise and lost that money. Hi from Cadiz, we made it. made it! It's our day off, no logistics or planning today. Yay. Our first port day was in Cadiz, Spain, where Haley and I had a lovely day walking around the port city. The morning started with coffee as we wandered around the tiny streets in the old town. The waterfront was gorgeous and the weather was sunny and warm. Knowing this was our down day, we relished in all of the relaxation and fully enjoyed knowing that we didn't have anywhere to be on this day. Great trip, great cruise, second and last day. We were proud of ourselves for making the cruise and we laughed about all of the crazy challenges that we had encountered to get to this point. And just like that, our two night cruise was over and it was already time to repack and disembark in Lisbon, Portugal. I've never done a two night cruise before, but boy did it go by quickly. The cruise was the only time that we had more than one night in a single spot on the whole trip. Haley and I found a luggage storage space in Lisbon where we could keep our backpacks for the day. We had the entire day in Lisbon and we wanted to take full advantage of this. Although the luggage storage was essentially the closet of a souvenir shop, we felt oddly comfortable leaving our backpacks there and we took our passports, wallets, and valuables with us in our purses for that day. Lisbon is such a charming city and it's so rich in history. We started our day with coffee before heading to the castle for exploring. They have a beautiful view of the entire city from on top of the castle. We're heading back to London. Yay! Yay. Going to London. <laughs> we'll get there real late and we're gonna get some good rest and enjoy our last day in London before we try to get home. Here we are. This airport has no ticketing agents, no counters. It's 
literally like just these random doors. We've been here for three hours and if we had known, we would have come later. 10.14, so we were supposed to take off 25 minutes ago. After a long wait for customs and immigration, we boarded our flight to London at 11 p.m. You could not get us out of that airport quick enough. We were exhausted from the long day of exploring, and then we were terribly cold, tired, and I am sure stinky sitting in the Lisbon airport. Good morning. 2 a.m. and we made it. 2 a.m. We just made it to our airport hotel. Time for bed and a nice shower and good sleep. Hi. We're pooped. <laughs> morning. Our last day. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully we get home tomorrow. Back in London, we spent one final day exploring the city again before getting situated and attempting to fly back to the United States the following day. Here we are trying to pack. We did a lot of souvenir shopping. We're hopefully heading home today. Ooh. Our first flights look good to the States. Second flight's home. Not so good. Could be another adventure today. Haley and I arrived at Heathrow Airport and we quickly made our way through security into the airport lounge. Our flight still had plenty of seats, so we relaxed with coffee and breakfast. To our surprise, we were assigned a seat within an hour of the flight taking off, and we were so excited that we were sitting together and we were guaranteed at this point to be getting back to the United States, and that is a huge relief. We almost did it. Almost. We were on our way home and we had successfully flown standby to Europe and taken our cheap two-night cruise. However, that's when things got much, much more stressful. Our final leg of the adventure sucks and we don't know how we're gonna get home. None of the flights to our home airport had any seats available. We started to look at other airport options within a few hours of our home. We found a flight that was leaving in about 30 minutes as we made our way through immigration, but we didn't know if we'd be able to make it. She still smiles. Right. Hi, okay. Next step. Next step. All right, we're trying for a flight that's probably not gonna make. I mean, I feel like we might as well walk up to it. If it's like delayed a little bit, I don't know. Go, baby, go! <sighs> Didn't make it. <laughs> Although it was only 4 p.m., we wanted to keep trying for other flights to get us closer to home. There was a flight to Alabama that we could try for, which would get us within a few hours of our house. And the standby list was long, but we had nothing else to do, so we figured we might as well sit at the gate and see what happens. And then it finally happened. <laughs> Philip, party of two. Philip, party. We got on the flight. Haley and I squealed with excitement, and there was a huge rush of adrenaline. We literally could not believe that we got the last two seats on this flight. We landed and we waited about an hour for Haley's husband to come get us before we could start driving back to our homes. Now we really did it. The adventure was over, and we successfully flew standby to Europe for our cruise. But at this point, you shouldn't be surprised that I would absolutely never do this again. As much fun as we had, there were multiple times during this adventure where I thought to myself, I would never do this again. I'd always considered flying standby to a cruise as it saves a considerable amount of money. However, flying standby is a huge gamble. And don't get me wrong, Haley and I had so much fun and we made really incredible memories together. But flying standby had a ripple effect with our planning and that made it less cost efficient than I ever imagined. If we could have flown to a major airport and booked a cruise that departed from that city, like Amsterdam or London, that would have alleviated some of the unexpected costs associated with last minute bookings. Along with that cost, there was heightened stress throughout our entire trip. It's one thing to make a plan and then execute that plan when you travel, but it's a whole different ballgame to plan and execute simultaneously. So many things were uncertain and required a huge amount of spontaneity. I don't have any regrets, but it isn't a trip that I would attempt again. Had we missed our cruise, we would have been super disappointed and we would have lost the money. 
but it's a risk that you take when you fly standby and you need to prepare to drop big money if something goes wrong. Above all, I'm just so grateful that I had a wonderful friend to accompany me on this adventure as I truly couldn't have done it alone. I would not have felt comfortable or confident in myself to take this crazy adventure solo. Haley and I made so many great memories together and we had a lot of laughs along the way. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody, to our crazy standby adventure with Cruise Blog. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe so that you can be notified every time we have a new video. Until next time, everybody, happy cruising.